Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at how you can take a single image and convert this into a 3D model that you can either animate, use as references for your sculpt or even as a base model for so many other things that you would like to do. So the first things to actually note is this is a research that is being done by Facebook AI Research, Facebook Reality Lab and also the University of Southern California. Now they've actually written a lot of papers about this and this has a couple of presentations that you should take a look at before you dive in head deep. Now if you want to get started with this, you can either go over to the GitHub or you can go to the Collab. Now if you go over to the GitHub, which we're going to look at right now, you'll also notice that they have a lot more documentation about this. And these documentations are also things that we're going to, you know, talk about why we'll just simply, you know, scroll through the process of working with this. And you can choose to clone this or you can simply click right here and open the collab. So if you open this in collab, the first things you would notice is you actually don't really have anything to work with. So we do need to have our own folder and, you know, things that we have to work with. And for that, you need to copy to drive. Now, copying to drive simply means that this is definitely going to make a copy and save it on your Google Drive. So that simply means that you need to be logged in to your Google accounts for you to have access to this. Now, once this opens, you practically notice that there's nothing different. The only thing that you would notice is there is no copy to drive so first things we need to do is just simply close this all right just simply close this right here scroll all the way down and you would notice that from here we have clone so right now by simply closing this you now notice that we have a new folder called sample data which doesn't really matter that much right now so i'm just simply going to click on this playback button just to get this to run now this will go ahead and clone the pif uhd now once this is done you would notice that we now have a pif uhd or a pif uhd folder right here so if we simply click down you would also see that we have a section called sample image now the image which we want to use is the image that we need to feed right here now if you want to get this image you can simply google them on the internet and that is pretty easy but before we actually talk about how you can google this you would notice right somewhere about this point that we have ram and disk first things i would suggest is once you click right here you need to choose to connect to the host runtime you can also choose to connect to your local runtime if you already i mean if you want to do this on your desktop but if you want to do this on the web which i pretty much think a lot of people would want to do simply click on connect to host runtime so once you click on the connect to host runtime you need to also wait for this to show you the ram and the hard disk and the next thing you need to do is google an image and with the image googled you might want to simply make that a png image first of all before you proceed now the reason why png image is being suggested by this research paper is just to you know cut down on both artifacts and and several stuff that you might have within your background that you probably wouldn't need so for our own example what we've done is we've gone ahead to download two images and if you want to simply create clean images or png images on the web you can use either of these solutions that was also suggested the very first one is if you're working online you can choose to work with you know the photo p which is exactly photoshop but photoshop for the web so with this you can you know take out the background resize do whatever you want and once you're done you can click on file and once you go all the way down from here you can now save this as png now the second option is you can also go ahead and go on the internet and use the remove the bg website and simply upload your image there now, once you throw in your image this website analyzes the image and simply streamlines it to the object that it sees on the image now once you get that done you'd also notice that it shows you the original and also the removed background image so with this you can simply click on the download button to actually get things going so with our images downloaded i'm just simply going to double click so that you guys can see so we have this first image and we also have a second image so what i'll do is to load up this image and throw it directly here so for us to get that going i just simply need to click drag and drop it right here where we have a sample images and once you drop that there it's going to give you some sort of information just simply click on ok and let that be next thing you need to do is just scroll all the way down you can click right click and copy the path all right or you can simply click right click and click on rename file now once you click on rename file and simply 
copy this you can come right here and change this to the file name and i'm also going to go ahead and copy this as well very simple and paste this right here so i'm actually just going to paste this right here and get rid of this all right so once we have this done and everything looks fine the next thing which you need to do is to simply go all the way to where you have as runtime and you can simply click on run all you can either choose to click on run all or you can simply click on run after i would simply suggest that you use this run after as this has actually given me more results than just simply using the run all so once you click on run after this would start processing and the processing actually takes you know depending on the image quality that you supplied and also depending on the image size this is going to take a while so we're just simply going to let this one run and once it runs we're going to come back and take a look at what it looks like so while this is going on you would notice that the minute it starts you know uh, compiling these and getting everything ready we now have a brand new folder called lightweight human pose so i'm going to click down here actually you don't really need any of these things right here as everything that you need will be supplied here once this is done you would get a different folder or a brand new folder that will be referenced as results now that result folder is where everything that you need would be stored in and this includes the file which you actually uploaded which is the png image an obj file and also a preview file of what you are working with so it's going to give you these three files and these three files are the files that you can proceed to work with so for my own example we kind of speed ramped this a little bit now with the result folder you notice that we have another folder inside and we're just going to double click that which is a final folder and directly under the final folder we also have a brand new folder called recon now for this i'm just simply going to download the obj file and we're going to throw this directly into Blender. With Blender open and with our tool loaded in, you, you can actually notice that this does a very good job owing to the fact that all we had to feed this was just one image, all right? Just one single front-facing image and it actually did a very good job. I mean, if I simply turn all the way around, you can notice that it sort of found a way to figure out how the back should look like. And it is not complete, you know, it's not 100% uh, anatomically correct because you can see we have some artifacts on the feet, which we would simply just go into the sculpt room and start making some changes just to clean up a couple of edges. And this makes, you know, it kind of makes a lot of sense. If you want to make some changes, you can simply do this. If, if you want to make some changes, you can simply do this directly in Blender. If you want to make some, you know, adjustments to certain parts of the model, this is totally fine. On the other hand, if you're also looking at, you know, uh, trying to create some sort of symmetry or you want to mirror stuff around, this is totally up to you as you can go in and make these changes. So what we're just doing is just, you know, clean up some artifacts. And with this done, we're going to re-export this file and bring it into Mixamo. So we've talked about Mixamo a lot on this channel. So you can simply take a look in the description. And But for this use case, we're going to simply throw this directly into Mixamo and allow this file to load. So once we have this file loaded directly into Mixamo, we will go in and make use of the auto rigger to rig the model. So since we have some parts which are not totally symmetrical, we're also going to go ahead and play around with it, position things where they are supposed to be. And it's very interesting to note that Mixamo has this powerful tool that is totally for free. So in case you want to rig any of your characters, you have full access to doing those. So with this done, we are going to simply wait for Mixamo to get this done. And finally, we have something to play with. So once this is done and ready, you can now notice that the animation that we're working with or the animation that is preloaded, which was, you know, playing before now, is now active on the model. And this is very interesting to see that it is kind of flawless to say the least, the things that you can now see here. So we can also go ahead and, you know, play with a couple of uh, motions just to see if it kind of holds up and to think that we only fed one single image and we're having a 3D animated model is just ridiculous. And one more thing, it's actually very interesting to see that once you're working with, you know, a tool like Mixamo, you can play with animation, you know, timing, you can retime the animation, you can fast forward it. You can just do all of these things. There's a range of different motions that you might want to play with and you can simply explore them. So with this done, what we're going to do next is just simply download these as an FBX model and bring that back into Blender. So this is a very, very interesting looking development and I actually find this one extremely useful so with us back into blender we are simply going to look at this file that we've loaded in let's go in and take out the overlays all right 
Let's throw in a very tiny grid just to look at what it looks like. And this doesn't look bad. I mean, if we actually push this a little further by adding some UVs, by simply projecting some maps on this, this would look extremely useful. You can now simply get this kind of characters and use them for your background. Maybe if you just want to have a model that just sneaks around since we're working with blender 2.9 what we're going to do is just simply create a couple of grids you know a couple of mesh and kind of simulate the idea of the character is walking past and i think if you are working in film or maybe you're working in animation and you need a character that doesn't hold so much detail something that's just going to be within the crowd or within the background or a passerby character this actually works and honestly i cannot wait to try out some more models or even try out some you know pretty cool looking stuff right now i don't really think that this supports characters that has to do with you know multiple set characters like uh, crazy ones or maybe pets or stuff like that for now i kind of think that this is basically you know uh, supported for human characters and, and all that although i have not tried this with some characters or animals or stuff i mean if you guys want to give that a shot that would be extremely useful and you know i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section so that's definitely about it guys i'd like to know what you guys think about this if you want to play with this a lot of links are in the description where you can find it useful and tell me what you guys think and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace